Order of a regular meeting, the Goodyear City Council, October 26, 2009. I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance and invocation. I have it. I you didn't have know it. That. You forget? I know the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, well. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Lord, uh, we ask that you uh, inspire this council and staff to, to accomplish our duties in the best manner possible. We particularly want to ask you to protect our people who are at uh, risk every day of their lives in pr protecting our uh, safety and uh, protect those who are preserving our freedom in differing parts of the uh, world. Amen. Amen. Six of the members of council are in attendance. Uh, council Member Souza is sick. He called her in earlier today to advise. And uh, so, could I have a uh, motion to excuse Council Member Souza? Second. I have a motion from Vice Mayor Lord and a second from Council Member Antoniak. Uh, could I have a uh, roll call? Is that right? No. 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 Okay. All those in favor, signify by stating aye. 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 It uh, passes 6-0. We have no expenditures to ratify or approve. No communications. Now, opportunity for any citizen uh, who would like to address this council on any subject which is not on this evening's agenda. I know there's at least one, but if anyone would like to address the council on a non-agenda item, this is the time to do that. Lynn? Here, the, I do have several cards. The first one is Alan Conlon. And I, I would just preface your remark with we ask you to keep it within three minutes. Oh, well, that's that's easy after listening to the budget that you guys just put out or, or the uh, a prognosis for our economy. Uh, this is almost moot, but I was just against raising taxes to build a library and the infrastructure. Uh, in the paper, it said that the uh, city manager wanted to spend two thousand dollars to get a survey, and you could do that. You could get your survey done with a citizen committee and telephone calls and a phone book, and it wouldn't cost us twenty thousand dollars. I try to live on just about that every year, so I know I'm one of the poor folk, but I don't want my taxes raised because of that. Uh, I'm sorry to hear about the uh, the layoffs with the community, and I'd like to not see any more. Uh, the other thing was uh, I met the artist that's doing the art project at our coffee social up in Australia Friday. And she's a real nice lady, and I saw the projected uh, art, artwork that's going to be done, and it's really nice. But she's from California, and I'm sure we have artists in Arizona, just like we have contractors in Arizona. And I think that we should stop using out-of-state people because they don't pay our taxes here, and our state is short on, on taxes. We hire people from Arizona, they're going to pay taxes in, in Arizona. And that's basically it. And uh, no one building anything. We don't have the money now, and you guys can see that as, as it stands. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Richard Kirschbaum. Good evening, Mayor Cavanaugh, Vice Mayor Lord, Council Members. He uh, basically talked about one of the subjects I was going to talk about for getting the volunteers and save $20,000. Um, the other thing was as far as like needing funds for the city center, uh, I'm not adverse to increasing property taxes if they're for a limited period of time and when the, tax, and when the dollars are matched and met that the taxes fall back to what they were previously and the increased taxes be repaid back to the taxpayers from revenues that will generate from those increased taxes. And also in regard to a committee to check into finances, private citizen committee, I think that time is of the essence. And if you wait a couple of months, and as uh, Council Member um, Ms. Osborne asked, it'll be February until you get the results of the December uh, tax revenue. So I think if you put a committee together now, you're, we're all best served. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'm not sure if um, this gentleman is here. Ted uh, Maltby? No, Ted's ill this evening. Okay. So uh, he told me to say something, but I'm like, don't do something. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move to consent. We'll ask the city clerk to read consent items A through C by title only, please. Item A, approved draft minutes of the work session and a regular meeting held on September 28, 2009 and a regular meeting held on October 5, 2009. Item B, approve an expenditure of $720,747 for design and construction related to the relocation of the Roosevelt Irrigation District Canal segment located on the former soil aquifer treatment sat site uh, northwest corner of Estrella Parkway and Yuma Road. And item C, accept the easement agreement from First American Title Insurance Company, trustee under trust number 530, trust for an underground pipeline for the 157th effluent pipeline south of MC 85 and west of Estrella Parkway. Okay, thank you. Would anyone in the public wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Anyone on council wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Uh, yes, sir. I'd like to um, pull item B. I'd like to hear staff's report on this. Okay. Uh, you want me to pull it now or you want the briefing and then to say? Yes, I'd like the briefing. Okay, let's, uh, who is, is that Harvey or is that, let's see, B is, we just that's, that yeah. So, I, okay, it'd be uh, water. Regis, I guess. Regis. Hmm? No, Mayor, just members just of council, uh, the relocation of the Rid Canal is what you're speaking of. The reason we need to move forward with that is if we prolong that construction, we'll miss a dry up period for the Roosevelt, Roosevelt Irrigation District. And if we miss that, we won't be able to do any construction on that site whatsoever until fall of next year. Um, regardless whether we move forward at this time or in March or this time next year, that construction isn't necessary to do anything at the city center site. That's one of the reasons it's, it's kind of an essence and, and a value to do at this time. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Could I have a motion uh, to approve the three items on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Motion from Vice Mayor Lord and second from Councilmember Antoniak. Roll call vote, please. Councilmember Cavalier? Aye. Councilmember Antoniak? Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Pizzillo? Aye. Vice Mayor Lord? Aye. Mayor Kavanaugh? Aye. Passes 6 0. Hey, thank you. Uh, move to information. Any of the council members wish to apprise the public on a current event? I don't know. Joanne mentioned the Maricopa, Maricopa County Annual Quality Conference we went to. And uh, I thought it was quite interesting in some of the facts we learned that uh, bad air quality affects more women than men by 24%. It creates 30% risk in overall life expectancy. I thought that was really interesting. I'm not sure how many years now I have left. Um, 14 million uh, missed school days by children with related illnesses to the air. Um, the other thing I thought was really interesting is the monitors. And uh, Arizona is so unique compared to the other states. And they... Um, states. States that have air quality problems. And um, they talked about possibility of looking at relocating some of our monitors and that they're placed in areas that probably are not giving us a fair a PM10 count um, as well as the direction that they're pointed in um, and of course it's really important to us because we have to do that 5% a year or we're going to lose as you know Mayor the the MAG funds for for highway users. So I thought that it was a, a really good conference to, uh, to be at. I attended a, G, a GPEC meeting and also for those of you that did not attend the GAIN event at the uh, ballpark, it was very beneficial for the uh, citizens. Uh, they had food uh, 
uh, stalls, which uh, one could eat your entire dinner there by going from one <laughs> stall to the next at no cost. Uh, staff did a great job. There was around 7,035 people there. I recommend it highly uh, for the families next year. This is one event that does not cost the citizens any money, uh, and yet it's a, a full evening of fun. And the other thing is bashes did open. I went to the opening and uh, the soft opening and uh, committed that I would shop there at least uh, a few times a month. Um, and that just shows you an example of what partnership can do. And my hat's off to uh, Westcore for uh, renegotiating their rent so that they're able to come back into our community. So I just shop bashes and help them make it this time. Okay, good. Councilmember Antoniak. We had a Health and Human Services Coordinating Committee meeting last week, uh, Mayor, and you'll be seeing some discussion, I'm sure, at the regional council level. But uh, MAG performs a survey every single year of the human services and, and the variety of needs that are out there from everything from you know, domestic violence to teen abuse to homeless counts to getting a better understanding on where, where our um, human services needs are. As, as local municipalities and as a region. But an interesting conversation that came up there was with all the state budget cuts um, that are occurring and the variety of need that that then creates is part of the survey that um, they're gonna do this year is actually looking at the shift of the need and seeing how is that impact uh, or how is that shift or burden related to say somebody that's off of access now or off of you know state funded variety of different cares uh, what does that do to us as municipalities? How does it impact our fire service? How does it impact our public safety? And how does it impact, uh, really, at the end of the day, our bottom line and our budgets? And so, uh, hopefully, you'll start to see that com that conversation bubble up to the uh, bubble up to the surface at regional council, and when y'all are making decisions uh, at regional council, uh, hopefully that feedback is helpful. So, it's a good good dialogue. Great, thank you. And a couple of things. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Last week, I was appointed um, the vice chair of MAG's Continuum Care on Homelessness. And just want to let the public uh, be aware that October is Homeless Awareness Month. Um, also, wanted to let the business owners uh, out there know that tomorrow morning is another one of our um, work groups for uh, small business and large business uh, in Goodyear. It's at 7 a.m. Would love to have businesses come out. Thank you. And I did attend the air quality conference. And one other little tidbit that was interesting: the West Valley was was unfortunately um, kind of hammered about being the worst of the polluters. And uh, and I think yeah. that monitoring site may have had something to do with it. But what was also interesting is that the home builders, they were they were going full force out there, and and they said it that they felt it was very interesting that they had always been blamed for at least 40% of the um, air quality issues out there, and yet um, their home building has dropped 80%, and we've still had, uh, I believe, same stats, same stats of, of bad days of pollution. And so it was interesting that the home builders were going, well, hey, now wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we being blamed? So I thought that was quite interesting. I've also um, asked uh, our council aide to send a letter to our superintendents because uh, there is a program out there for schools uh, to have somewhat of flag days. And Georgia, you mentioned the amount of children that are affected by bad air. And so it was kind of a, a monitoring to schools of saying, okay, it's you know red flag day, Kids with health issues, you need to know this. Parents, you need to know this. Don't don't sit there in line to pick up your kid with your car idling. Things like that, you know. So uh, good information from that conference. Right. Yeah. Just wanted to um, report that uh, there was some publicity on the uh, RPTA, which I represent Goodyear in. The uh, this is our bus transit uh, committee council from, uh, and I. Uh, I represent Goodyear. Uh, the um, some neighboring cities had some problems with uh, their finances and have dropped some of their bus service. And uh, it appeared that uh, some of that was being blamed on Goodyear because Goodyear voted with Phoenix and not with the West Valley on uh, the bus service. And 
uh, little did they realize it was because, um, and that was my vote, and I voted that way because we wanted to put that in a holding pattern so that we could finish the budget on time and take that into a subcommittee, and the subcommittee had been working on that. They've had seven meetings, and they're supposed to bring their final um, conclusions to us before the 31st of December, and we will have the full budget amendment done by the 1st of April if it goes through all the subcommittees with the RPTA. And uh, I'm also one on, on one of those subcommittees, budget and finance. So uh, anyway, if, if you read anything in the paper about that or heard anything from uh, one of our neighboring cities, it, um, it's the, the cutting of bus lines and bus service was not due to RPTA. We've not cut any bus service. That was strictly from that city's budget. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. I just uh, second the Vice Mayor's comment on gain. It was a, really a testament to the, uh, how supportive our people are and how active they are, and uh, it, it made, made you feel good just being out there with them, quite candidly. So John was out there, Georgia, and others, many others. Uh, and uh, so thanks to the people, but superb job by the staff. And Absolutely. the citizens that all manned those different booths, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. they did a great job. And then uh, just lastly, I just came for another meeting. We have 8,500 people who have signed, signed on to loop forward. Uh, that's a little, that's quite a bit ahead of our projection. We'd like to get to around 60,000 people. Would you sign on as a resident of the, this uh, valley? And you say that you support Luke and you want them to get the F-35. And uh, so that's important to us. I think In Focus has something on that and then our website. So you can go to our website or In Focus and that will lead you to a, the Luke Forward website. And you sign on and then you're one of those 60,000 who's telling the Pentagon and others that you want the F-35 here. So, City Manager. Uh, one item, Mr. Mayor. Um, that you and the council discussed last week um, the scientific survey, the possibility of doing a scientific survey. So I just want to report to you on what our findings are so far. Um, we could complete it with the results presented in early January. Uh, we can do our usual survey with the same number of questions, 100, which is 65, same pattern, uh, asking the same questions, and 35, we save 35 for additional questions that we want to check in any one year. We do this every two years, 2004, 2007 was the last times, and so this is the 2009 survey. We have, it would cost us $20,000, and we still have that in the budget. We have protected it up to this point, uh, so it is still there. Um, we usually do 400 samples, and there was some discussion about that uh, last week. Um, that allows for a sampling error calculated at 95% confidence level, the, which is the level most frequently used by social scientists. Uh, this confidence level assumes, means that if you asked 100 different people or groups of 400 people the same question, 95 groups would give you the same answer. Uh, 400 sample gives a margin of sampling error of 5% at 95%. Uh, the city of San Diego, for an example, uses 400 as their sampling for their surveying. We could go up to 600 sample size for $5,000 additional. So it would cost us this year $25,000. The margin of sampling error would be 4.1% versus 5%. Uh, so for $5,000, we can purchase 0.9% uh, more accuracy. The only advantage to us of going to 600 is uh, getting a larger size 200 for sampling subsets such as the three areas of our uh, of ours that we're interested in comparing results of. The city of Phoenix does a sample of 700, uh, but they have 1.5 million residents. So that's what we have found out so far, but we could do it this year still and get the results in January. Uh, this was being discussed in relation to the uh, city center and the universities um, and so we could also do just a quick survey four questions on the universities and taxes and that could be done before the end of this year we could get the results of that that would cost almost twenty thousand dollars also so I know I asked this question last time 
and everybody said, ho, oh, oh, ho, no, no. And the gentleman spoke tonight on it. Uh, is, is there any way you can do um, volunteer? I mean, they do it all the time in different areas where volunteers come and call on the telephone and you're given a script and this is what you ask. Is, is that in city government just frowned upon? And Shouldn't be. Um, that's the question I have because it, it, it's valid when he said we could say, you know, so much money to call and ask a question. I could sit and call and ask the questions. So I, I'm throwing that out to you, John, and you just have to explain it to me because that I, I question that. That is it the validity of it that people aren't going to believe you if you have a citizens committee and all of us would be calling? No, I, I would think that it could be done, um, and I can get back to you with uh, how that would be done. Uh, it would obviously cost us some money for training, et cetera, et cetera, but um, we could certainly do that. I, I think it's something to look into. I, yeah, I, 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 it's just they're simple questions. So they're not very complicated questions. Yeah. They aren't complicated questions, but I just caution you, having been a social scientist in a former life, and the survey questions, it has to be done accurately and consistently. Okay. Well, I, I wanted to throw that out. Because well, and, and follow up, I think, of the idea, but also, John, that survey you're talking about is more than just the city center, correct? I mean, it's oh, something yes. that the city does just for explanation. This it's is a the, biannual survey right, that we do every two years. And it's to look at service levels, what they're happy with, what they're not happy with, what they would like, you know, improvements in what we provide. So it was, would you mention about 100 questions? A hundred questions. Oh, so this is going to be the normal survey this, we've yeah. always done before with additional right. questions. Yes. What I was explaining is we can do that survey and have the responses by January. We could do a quicker survey and just the four questions asked about the university funding and stuff like that. We could have that before the end of this year. And that cost was, help me again. Uh, $20,000. Still, roughly. yeah. Same thing. It's still the same thing. So if you were getting people trained a little cheaper, uh, following up on what George is saying, then you should be able to save maybe some of that money. But they, they'd have to make sure they'd ask this question in the same way every time when they made those calls. And then as far as the 400 universe, who comes up with that? You just don't randomly pick 400 people. They've got to be demographics. We'd and have variety. to pay for that. Right. But that would, I mean, that's easily done. Okay. Um, the, the primary thing that I want you to be aware of is if we want to take advantage or try to take advantage of the savings that I talked about last week, we have to have this concluded by January 1st. And then it's not even guaranteed. I mean, the earlier we do that, the better for the, those contracts. If we did it in January, I mean, I don't think we would be saving those contracts. So. And you need consistency from year to year so that you have something that's... Well, and 2004 and 2007 were exactly the same for the 65 questions. That's why we want to build upon that consistency. Right. I and think the, so. The firm we use is Behavioral Research. It's out of Phoenix, and it's a, a national firm that is very recognized for doing social science surveys. And, and we would be getting more information from that than just the four questions about university, which to me is more important to get more information total, total. that we've Most waited two years to have. So, Well, I know the Wall Street Journal says today that there is an indicator it's going up because copper is going up slowly, uh, yep. steel, aluminum, and to, they were don't just... Don't talk to me about gold. Yeah, and, and so... So we know there is a small window of time that this construction is going to cost us less if, but, in fact, we go forth with that. And I mentioned last week, I mean, I forget the numbers, but uh, the increases from where we locked in the contracts, where our contractor locked in the contracts, to the increases that already, as of last week, were hundreds of thousands of dollars. So we've already made some reduction on it by locking into the contract. That much, yeah. Save that much, yeah. You know, but we, we've had a couple of people in front of us today say that they think it should be done by our own citizens. And uh, I think it would be appropriate in, in respect to them and to the council that maybe a couple of days you come back with the pros and cons of each. Is that yeah, all right? I, think it's a, I, I would like it. That I would like hurt. a more formal answer to the citizens that came before us on that today. There's lots of people listening, and they probably question. So can right, I do right. that? I appreciate it, John. Thank you. Questions of state. Go ahead. Well, when, uh, when you bring when you bring that back, I would maybe even ask 
there's a certain amount of expertise that goes along with behavioral research, but probably some ownership with their survey uh, mechanism. But uh, perhaps I, I, I do genuinely think that if there was a volunteer aspect to it, especially from the citizens, uh, that there may be some more time and effort and energy put into it than the paid individuals that are at behavioral research, not discounting behavioral research. They do great work, but I also, I've also been in their environment in a political spectrum and kind of watched the people that they hire. So again, not dissing them. But it would be interesting to hear from them if we provided X number of volunteers with their tool in that. their call center perhaps. That's um, a good idea. Would they, would they facilitate? Thank you. It would be educational for all of us. I'd love to sit on the phone myself. John. I would. I'd, I'd be really <laughs> curious to talk I'll, to some I'll citizens. I'd I'll do it. it. I'd do it in a heartbeat. Hey, for the just, just okay. Mayor, just real quick. John, did, did you say you could st you could still do it before uh, uh, the first of the year to get both the city center questions and the other 65, or you couldn't do both? No, we can't. Well, unless we come up with some other way of doing this with citizens, we'll check Okay, on that. okay, thanks. It may not work, but. Okay, uh, questions of staff by council? We have a new Phoenix colleague, David Cavazos, was appointed city manager in Phoenix. So, who? Phoenix. Oh, was he? David Cavazos is the new hmm. city manager in Phoenix. Good. Hmm. Meeting is adjourned.